Two, I have three kitties, and one is joining us already. Hi, kitty. Hi, everyone. Emmy says hi. It is Friday, which means it is time. I know your cats are sweet, but I'm sorry. Every time you like wave their paw and they have cat face, resting cat face, which is always that face of what are you doing? What are you doing, mother? Why? Why must Mom. you? I'm sorry, you I interrupted know, your, your opening. No, it's totally cool. It's Friday. It's time for another paint and slay. I am V, and above me is Lauren. And today we're going to be painting some fantastic minis, not the cat. We're going to be painting some fantastic minis from WizKids Games. We're doing some Modron. So we have the Pentatron and the Quadrone ready uh, to keep going. And hopefully we'll get them finished uh, before the end of this episode. However, before we get into adding more color to these, Lauren, what do we have going on with uh, Idol Champions this week? Oh, so much. Okay, mm. so I don't know what order we've got our fun things in, but I'll just start with I'll pop it up. Uh, I'll start with Avandra because Avandra is the most recent thing that is going to be ending soon. Uh, the event is coming to a close on Monday, so you have the weekend to go ahead mm -hmm. and unlock this kick butt tank and all the arms that she likes to chop off. Definitely go ahead and uh, get into the game and get those last few chests. I know I'm I'm on the hunt for a few last purples to fill her out. So definitely go ahead and do that. And and also pick up some more chests for mm -hmm. Nordum and Mahen. Mahen. Uh, and make sure you put Mahen in that new skin that just came out because that skin is amazing. Oh and that coffee cup is the amazing. Mug. The, the mug. mug, the mug. That's all um, I we also announced, speaking of the One for All crew, we also announced yesterday that BBG is coming to the game uh, next week. So every once in a while, we have one of those event and then event, just like every mm -hmm. once in a while, we have a, a week of a free play and a free play because, you know, the Faerun calendar and our calendar don't quite match oh, up. So yeah. you'll get two events right in a row. And yeah, BBG is coming to the game. And I highly recommend that you pick up the big bad evil guy on wednesday when he comes out so that you can fill your entire screen with zombies put put bbg in there and uh -huh. miria and um oh my god uh, viconia prudence, right doesn't prudence does do something with undead too or uh, i'm thinking of viconia it's viconia yeah. it's viconia yep, i'm thinking of viconia put the, yep put the three of them in a formation and then oh dear god giggle. and <laughs> then just giggle I, I was putting the video together for BBG, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Um, and the only reason that you don't see Miria and or Viconia in any of the formations is because it just gets joyfully ridiculous. And the purpose of that video is to highlight BBEG. But trust me, use them all in the same formation. Can you get a short formation. of that? You need to get a short of that. I can do that. I will do that because it is... Yay. It is beautiful and you know me i'm not i'm not a zombie person but it's amazing am and I. then and then set off uh bbg's ultimate and then get even more and more zombies it's ridiculous and i love it so much so yes wednesday get bbg in your game for dragon down right? dragon down yep yep dragon Good. down okay i got that right um Yay. and yes and then... you can check out the blog and the video which are live right now so if you want to mm -hmm. learn all of the juicy details go check those out um I don't know what's we next. We have we can buff. Oh yeah, we can buff. Uh so say you're trying to get those last few purples for Evandra, then this weekend, hey, look, it's Miria. We were just talking about her. Right. So Miria, Human, Brunor, uh, Andreas, and Minsk are all available with a little bit of a buff this weekend to help you get those final bits and pieces done before the event is over. Um, and definitely check out your email so that you get your free Vanguard chest. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, go ahead and do that. You'll not only get a uh, every single week you'll get uh, an email that includes a free gold chest but you'll also unlock hitch who's a pretty awesome champion fantastic give me my arm hold them yes that is everything i mean for now. we might have for a now. little more coming up in a little bit so stick around yeah we, we have minis to paint but there's also gonna be times where we need the minis to dry a little bit so that'll be the perfect time to kind of talk about this all over again or maybe something else yeah um, also happy pride happy pride everybody <laughs> Um, I got to do the backup thing in order to show off my shirt. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right? All right. 
So now that Hemingway has kindly given me back my arm, but has also moved the camera. Oh, uh oh, I I'm so bad. I forgot this. Gabe is our wonderful moderator in Gabe. chat today. Thank you, Gabe, Yay. for joining us. They will be grabbing questions from the chat. So if you have any questions about painting, about idol champions, about Modrons, we'll try to answer whatever we can. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and put those in chat with question in big capital letters so Gabe can grab it and stash it away so that when I am uh, taking a moment to look away from the mini, I see your question and don't miss it in chat. Also, hi, chat. There. Thank you. Hello. I think I got everything now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, we have these two minis that we're kind of working in tandem uh, because while one drives, we jump over the other one and we're going to do that still. Uh, we're actually going to do a wash on the Quadrone because I want to get the wash in first before we start doing things like the eyeballs because sometimes when you do the eyes on these types of creatures and then you do a wash, it'll gray them out. Mm. And since these are mechanical, I want to try and keep it to a truer, brighter white or ivory in this case. So what we want to do is get, it's up to you. If you want to grab your Agrax Earthshade or if you want to use the Umber Wash from WizKids d, &D Prismatic Paints, uh, either will be fine. Basically a brown wash is what we're looking to do. And we're going to wash the entire mini itself. And then what we can do is set this guy to the side. We'll work on the Pentadrone. And by the time we need the Pentadrone to start drying a little bit on certain things, we can go back to this guy and do the eyes. And the it. bow and then the arrow. Yeah. Okay, so... Grab your brown wash of choice. Mm. And and I went for the umber wash that's in the kit. Uh, I don't have a preference one way or the other, but when I'm pulling all the paints ahead of time so that they are here yeah. instead of, you know, it's just easier to grab all the same out of the Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I just, I have a lovely little cart over here that is hugely helpful. So I'm able to have mm. everything that I need at hand. I just, I, I, I like these Citadel shades big time. They make me happy. Yeah. So I'm going to go in, but it's basically, it's a brown wash. Full stop brown wash. So I'm going to go everything. I'm gonna start, yep, top of the wings and down the body. All right. I think this is the first time that we've started an episode Washing? in the wash. Yeah. We've done like pre-treatment wash on a couple things, like taking the black wash to help bring out the details before painting. Um, which is a great technique for those first starting out with miniature painting. If you want to see the details better, um, do a, do a very thin black wash over your miniature and it'll pop out the details ahead of time for you. And also get into those recessed areas that might be a little bit harder to reach when you're first learning how to do things. Mm. So it's sort of your little insurance policy in that respect with painting. I love a good wash and all washes are good. Mm -hmm. I will, I will forever be happy with washes. Oh yeah. I have never been upset by them. And now that I've said that, of course I am uh I am tempting fate, but you know what? Come at me, fate. I mean, the only little heads up I'm going to give is that the wings like to collect the wash, mm. which you can see happening through here. So you might just have to go in when your brush is a little bit drier and kind of just pull through the little flare of the feathers at the base. Yeah, they definitely want to collect in the corners. Yeah. On the ends. Which, quite frankly, is want to happen with a wash like this and the feather shape like that. So it's not surprising. It's just going back and kind of checking your work and pulling back where you can as you move along. Is part of this the um, uh, gravity? Would holding it upside down help? Or yep. is it mostly um, just the, the it's wing just, shape? It's the shape of the wing itself because it is a sharper angle and a finer point where they meet. The liquid just wants to live there. It happens sometimes. Um, right. You can hold it upside down and kind of move it around. You can go with a lightly um, loaded brush instead and do a gradual layer. It's just just sort of a heads up, like keep an eye out for this little quirk that is going to happen. Yeah, already so, I'm like, okay, let's yeah. just, my, my brush is dry. Let's just grab some more off a wing. Yep. That's all you have to do. Okay. Bless you, got everywhere. Bless you, kitty. And see, we're, we're at a good point here because all that's going to be left to do are the eyeballs, the bow and arrow, and then just a really light dry brush on the wings to enhance those feather details a little bit more. So that's, and the base. We'll get to the base. We'll get to I that. tend to leave the bases for the very end because quite frankly, if for some reason we can't get to the base, I can easily tell you, base it in this color, dry brush in this color, wash it with this wash, and you're done. Yeah. 
It's not that I don't like to do face work. It's that face work oftentimes for the show is a little less demanding. So it's easier to relay what can be done before we have to end the show. It's also a small base. So it's easy to kind of uh, leave that for last, especially if we're not doing anything Uh uh, ridiculously complicated or adding crystals and things. Crystals! Which I I mean, crystals are fun. Don't get me wrong. They are fun. They are really a lot of fun. Okay, so... You stay there and dry. <laughs> I was like, you're talking to me? <laughs> I, I was like, I'm talking to your cat. What? <laughs> uh, so no, this has been my way. This is where my brain is. I'm like, she's telling me to dry. I'm like, what do I do? Because I, I also, I, well, I just told you before we started how I keep spilling things today. <laughs> so I'm like, v, I'm stay there. Like, no, I drew. Stay there and dry. <laughs> <laughs> I literally looked at my pants. I'm like, wait. Did, did she see that I dribbled? What? <laughs> nope, nope. You're all fine. You're all fine. Oh, my God. I, I only make demands of my, my minis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we're going to grab some hammered copper <laughs> from the D&D prismatic paints, and that is basically a metallic that looks like copper. Shocker. Um, and this is going to go on the plates above the head. Okay? So all of these plates here are all going to be hammered copper on each petal or what do we call them again oh um oh yeah. appendages um oh hammered copper there we go uh appendages chat help chat what did we call them last week what do we call they were like petals or something i thought we well i was calling them petals to begin with but then i said something just off the cuff being myself and we ended up like i want to say it was flippendages something like that we both immediately finels and limbs finials finial is finials. finial finials. finial is thank the you. top portion but we were Th- calling thank them you lurking writer. hello hotter world um flappages oh maybe it was i think it was flappages sounds... yeah i think it was flappages flappages <laughs> flappages is even better what is going on with me I tell you. All right. So I'm going to thin that hammered copper just a wee bit because mine came out kind of thick. I remember if it's like toothpaste, you really don't want to go with that for when you're putting on thin layers of paint uh, for Mm. this type of approach that we did. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to basically, you can see there's this ridge thing going on here. So I'm going to put the hammered copper onto this ridge, but then also onto the plates on the forehead. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to paint this ridge section up first so you can get a good reference of what I mean. Yeah, cuz it looks like it's there, there's so many there's lovely ridge. lines, but yeah. I want to make sure I get I think I see what you're talking about cuz it's yeah. only the top portion. Exactly. So any any of the areas where you could con- you could continue down the uh, mm-hmm. the flappendages. Yeah, so let me get one of these fellows quickly glazed so you can get a reference for what I'm talking about with where you want this hammered copper to go. Okay. Uh, Especially because we have five of these to do. It'll be a lot easier to see one colored up first. Okay, there we go. So you can see how it goes into that little horse shoe shape and then down the front panels of the forehead. So these little side markings here, we're gonna do in a different metallic, the sides of the flippendages, those will be something else entirely. Because it's fun to have things in multiple colors of metallics, because why not? I mean- It gives it a a better depth, I found. Yeah. All right. Well, and Modrons have that distinct joy because they are metallic creatures. You can have fun with multiple metallics right. in one place. Well, yeah. I think the vast majority of the time with a lot of the creatures that we do, it's like, oh, they have a sword. Exactly. Or they've got armor. Or, you know, or they are a metallic dragon. Mm-hmm. It's nice when you can play around. And we're going to have fun with that metal medium soon. Ooh. Um, so not only are we going to have classic metal colors we're gonna make some colors that nod to the awful ones oh yeah so that'll be fun talking about that yeah Yeah. Yeah. that'll be something fun to do together with us half tempted to move to a smaller brush but that i'm also being very stubborn 
<laughs> oh, I went immediately for the tiny brush, but I trust no, myself less than you do. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go tiny. It might take a little bit longer, but that's okay. But I'm also struggling a little bit with whether I want to, with how exactly I want to hold this. I'm kind of holding it. Well, it's, I also have a different base that I'm kind of propping it up on. So I'm kind of holding it upside down so it's easier to see the ridging. Yeah. I think you're right that upside down is easier to see the ridging, but I, I'm, I'm personally finding that uncomfortable. So, so I've, yeah, then I've kind of I ended think up doing it's also this. the base that you're working on. It's not as broad as mine is. Oh, no, mine is just yeah. a the top of a pill bottle. Yeah, so that's going to make a big difference for you. And normally it is way more than enough, but every once yeah. in a while, you know what though, anything that we'd be mini. using. Yeah. It's a top heavy mini. So if you don't have a wider base like I have, there's really not enough to put grip on and keep the balance. So it's not making your hand cramp up. Yeah. So yeah, however it works best for you, that's how you do it. And, and frankly, that's what I'm talking about. No matter what base we put it on, it would be great for some things and then not as great for mm -hmm. others. So Exactly. That's why I have like five different things to use for bases, for holding bases now. Um, I, th I think that might be my next yeah. upgrade in my mini painting stuff will be mm -hmm. uh, something that is actually designed to be a mini holder while painting and not just, I've yeah. got 3 billion pill bottles. What size pill bottle can I go for now? You need to find you someone with a 3D printer who can make you one of those hook holders. They're fun. Ooh, I, I do have a very good friend who has one. Yes. Also, Nine Neville says they make fatter pill bottles now so you can get a larger base to work with. Yeah, I've got a, a big one, but I I know this isn't even the biggest that I could get. Oh, yeah. You know, for, for good or for ill. So, but yeah, I think if I'm going to still have a gift certificate to my friendly local game store that I I am excited to use at some point. So maybe go. go down uh, go down there one of these days and... Mm -hmm. Uh, see what they've got because something they have a ton of mini painting supplies not as many they minis do. but uh, just a giant variety of, of painting stuff for you know many many obvious reasons right so chances are they've got a couple of options mm -hmm. oh absolutely okay so i have all the head plates done i'm on my last one pretty sweet I also have a very fuzzy lumbar pillow right now. <laughs> Hi, kitty. That means like curled up right behind my back. Hi, Bubba. Aww. Hi, Bubba, too. Oh, you purr? You sweetheart, you purr. Everyone Aww. in chat, say hi to the kitties. Okay, so then we're going to jump over to black. Do, 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 do. That's all I'm giving you. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's almost necessary now whenever we it really use black. It really is. But that's okay, because it's, it's it's a good song, and it's got a lot of good uh, versions. And I think I got it all. Let me take a quick look. Sweet. Oh, nope, there's a spot. Okay. Ooh, very happy black. It's a black. Jeez. Yep, black. So what we're going to do is we have the one that has its mouth sort of open like, huh? Um, so I'm going to go in with the black and just the inside of the mouth, not the lips, is going to get a treatment of black, basically. All right. Ugh. Oh, my black had a crusty on it. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. Is that the only one with a mouth like that? That is the only yep. one with a mouth that is like the only that. one. He's a ghast and a gog. Come on, come on. Just just Get a little nudging of the black. A little little nudge it around. Yeah. How high up on that upper lip are you going? Because it's not just that his not mouth very. is open, but there's a little bit of like an Elvis uh, going on. Yeah, not very, because we're going to go back in with a, like a very pale peachy lip tone. 
Ah, okay. So I'm literally just treating this like as the darker mouth open inside of the mouth type of thing. Okay. That takes care of that. Okay, now we're going to have some fun with colors. So we want the ultramarine blue okay. and the metal medium, which is basically, it looks like this pearlescent white paint. But when you mix it with flat colors, it makes them metallic, which is really a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm going to do equal parts for this. Uh, so a drop of the ultramarine to a drop of the metallic medium. Okay. And then stir them up. And this is, this one's going to be our nod to Antrius. Because Antrius's color is basically blue. Yeah. And it's a very pretty blue, too. I really like this. It's a beautiful like blue. And we don't get to use it that often. So I'm like, I'm going to use my ultramarine blue because I can. Yeah. Because I can. So there. And then just FYI, it does fade the color a little bit because, you know, again, it has that pearlescent factor to it. Um, so if you ever want to make it a metallic, but keep a darker tone, you could do things like add in a very dark purple to darken up the blue a little bit, but bring the brush with a dab of paint onto it to the mix instead of trying to put a dab of, of the purple into the paint itself because you might over drop. Um, mm. It's easier to gradually build up the darkness and then try and bring it back down. So once you that get that sense. mixed together, I am going to slightly thin this. Okay. This mine was thick. And then once it's thinned, I just put in a drop for mine. I'm going to start yeah. applying it to the plates that are under the face. And we're going to use this color across all the pate, plate, pates, all the pates, all the plates just under the face. <laughs> I think that's where things went wrong. Plates and face. I mean, it's also, once again, it's Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, any specific... Oh, so on the underside of all of yep. them, kind of the same, the opposite of what we just did with the the. Except bronze. we're only going to do it on just this one plate here. Oh, okay. So yep. frowny face. Frowny, frowny. On all of them. So on see all... how there's one, two, three. Oh. Yep. Okay. So on all sides. All, one all the petals. Plate. One plate. The one plate that starts under the chin. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was. For all of them. Now bases. I understand. This is this is why we do step by step and double check. Yeah, you know, especially for, when you have for, something like this. Yeah, for a modron, trying to be as accurate with numbers is kind of important. Mm -hmm. I still want to create a, an encounter when I DM a game where it is a bunch of modrons and it's a penta down to a mono, yeah. and the only way they can communicate with the monodron. <laughs> It's through like telephone. <laughs> I want it to happen so badly. Oh yeah. Did I already talk about the Cobalt game I played a not Cobalt the Grun game I played a while ago that was like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I would like to think Modrons would be way better at that. I would like to think, but you know yes. what? I might be wrong. And uh, and yeah, I think that could be a lot of fun. The Great Modron March, except it's instead of uh, attacking the Modrons, you're desperately trying to convince them mm -hmm. to go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. How backwards You need to speak to my supervisor. And you can't speak to my supervisor because I can't speak to my supervisor. Right? I can't help you, but I know someone who can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who they can't help you directly, but they know someone who can. <laughs> Yep, you're just going to have to go up the chain of command. Mm -hmm. These are the ideas I get in my head sometimes. I mean, this it's is what fun. happens when you're a, a storyteller, right? Is every right? once in a while. Even, you know, most of the time I'm a shower person. I'm in the shower thinking about the things I got to do or, uh, you know, walking outside. And that's mm -hmm. when, gee, I wonder when. See, I had an awesome um, boss for a little side gig of mine, and he literally told me, he's like, listen, if you're coming up with concepts while you're scrubbing your hair in the shower, he goes, yeah, you can bill me for that time because I know you're sitting and thinking about something that's related to my business, so. That's funny. Uh -huh. shower, shower billing time. That's kind of uh -huh. cool. And his whole thing Sorry, was like, Jeff. if you have a Eureka moment where it's not like you're sitting at your desk, I'm not going to say that doesn't count. Was yeah. his whole point. 
I just Which is it was cool. Hysterical. Yeah, that was that very is, cool of him. Yeah, that's super nice. Also, sorry, chat, if I haven't been paying attention to you, but we've been doing a lot of little fiddly work. Yeah. This is why Gabe is awesome. Definitely put those uh, any of those questions with question in front of it so that mm -hmm. I don't miss it because we're, be we're getting trickier. into the fiddly bits, yeah. the fun fiddly bits. This is the fiddly pedal bits today. Yeah. But this is such a cool color. Yeah. This This next part is going to be fun because we're getting all these cool colors on here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I do tend to be the person who, all right, I'm going to paint this thing. So I'm going to paint it to look like the thing mm -hmm. in the artwork or somewhere else. But I really do enjoy getting to put a, a unique spin on something like this. That's just like it. the, the boulders that we've done. And um, I'm not just, not just like, oh, we're making a, a kit bash, but like a literal, we're going to mm -hmm. take this already made mini, but we're going to make it look like this specific creature yeah the this... custom paints yeah yeah that's so cool i think I that's it. that's the thing i gotta i gotta try to get more uh i gotta get better at myself is looking at a mini and not just going okay well this is a green dragon right so it needs to be green yep that's definitely something that comes with time to be honest because then you'll start to see potentials and how you can sort of adjust shading and everything to better reflect what you have in your mind's eye, which may not necessarily be on the mini itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's with all the blue around it. Yep. I'm on my last one, <laughs> which means once you get that done, put my notes over, we're going to grab some scarlet red and mix that with the metal medium. And that's going to represent Nixie. Because when that lightens up, it'll be a very Nixie pink. And even if it's not a Nixie pink, it'll be a Nixie fireball red. Right? There we go. All, All right. right. Do the same thing. Drop a scarlet to a drop of metal. And if you're looking for more generic paint colors, it's basically a classic cobalt blue that we just used and then a cherry red for the scarlet red. Ooh, my metal medium is blowing bubbles. Ew. That was not a drop, that was a bubble. Ew. Yep. Go there. <laughs> Lurking writer says, hot pink equals Nixie's fireball. You know, you're not wrong. I, it, True. I could totally see her mm -hmm. uh, pink fireballs. I mean, that's with a blue center. Ooh. Um, the game I ran for my podcast, my wizard player went all in on being an evo evocation wizard. Uh huh. Just like, all right, I'm going to do all of the, the destruction stuff and, and especially fireballs and things, but like just destruction in general. Um, and so he started describing his fireballs as being blue. Because Ooh, I like it. blue is supposed is is like one of the more on intense. the spectrum yeah. a hotter color yeah. than red, even though so yeah, yep. it was very awesome when he'd be like and the, and then he also had the because he's a wizard so he could sculpt, nice. so he would just drop fireballs in places mm -hmm. and then sculpt around everybody and and yeah he'd destroy my creatures a lot of the time but you know what it was epic and it was fun. I mean, epic and fun is a good is a good descriptor for games. Yeah, and then every once in a while, I'd throw uh, things that were immune to fire at him, and so he'd have to switch perfect. things up. That's perfect. Or, yeah, or give other people a chance to be epic. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I really liked him flavoring those fireballs as as being blue. That is fun. I am here for that concept. Oh yeah, and I hadn't even thought about. Um, you know, it's one of those, are are we playing D&D &D to be realistic about anything? No. But in this case, the reality of what a hotter fire actually looks like mm -hmm. gives such a cool idea for flavoring a spell that I love it. Yeah. I mean, I always love playing around with colors whenever it comes to spell effects. Like um, with Nika, most of her spell effects are either a mix of black and like very deep forest or purple. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it taps into the more like, you know 
druidic, the green earth and everything like that, but also like, you know, death and necrotic stuff with the black and the purple. Um, so, yeah. And then that was one of the really cool things about the game that we played uh, with Vornik and Gosric. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, here's two very different druids in right. a lot of ways. Uh, and and just here's the same spell, but in two completely different flavors. And that, that was yep. super cool to watch because uh, you don't often get, unless it's one of those games in where that's that's like a one shot that it's part of the one shot is everybody's playing the same class. Right. Uh, people tend to try to not be the same class, but that yeah. was an excellent example of like, yeah, you can have two druids in the party. Mm -hmm. They can even be druids who are using the same type of spells or oh, the yeah. same spells, but just the way they flavor them and the way they use them and everything, they're, they're still two completely different characters. Totally. Absolutely the case. I mean, I'm working with my players for D&D in a castle where, where I have them doing some fun um, character backstory building and everything like that right now, just so we kind of don't have to worry as much about the um, first couple hours of that awkward getting to know each other's characters. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing these activities with them ahead of time, uh, just through text messages and stuff. But um, they were kind of plotting out what their classes were going to be. And two of them landed on the same class. Like, can we be, can I be a such and such? I said, sure, no problem. I, I, I literally, I'm like, literally, like, as long as it's not this particular thing, you're fine. Mm -hmm. um, like, just don't use this particular campaign book. I'm like, that's not one I'm going to be dealing with. Uh, and they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. And then as soon as the person said, can I be this class? The other person said, but I want to be that class. I'm like, look, I am fine if there's more than one of you class-wise. If mm -hmm. you'd rather one of each, I'm going to leave that between the two of you. You're adults. But to me, like having the same class to me is almost a moot point. I'm like, okay, so the same class, but you can play them very differently because of the characters and subclasses and, uh, you know, background stories and everything like that. So, oh, yeah, that's why I don't get like pearl clutching. <gasps> you can't all be this or you can't two of you be that. It's like, eh, let's see where this goes. This could be fun. I frankly get super excited when. Yeah. Several of my players are like, we want to be the same class. We want to be the same lineage. We want to mm -hmm. we want to both be from the same background. We both, right. you know, because those when you use that as a way to inspire not just character concepts, but then tying mm -hmm. them together and then also figuring out the differences like that gets it gets so it's, much fun. It's fascinating. Yeah. And it's, is it a little more work for the players? Yes, but it's like really joyful work. It's like, it it's almost neat. in a weird way makes character creation easier because uh -huh. it limits options in some ways. And so now you're like, okay, we know we're both doing this. So mm -hmm. how, how do, you know, what are you thinking about a character? What am I thinking about a character? How do we separate the rest of it? How do we keep combining it? Do exactly. we want to just be twins on everything? So yeah. Twinsies. <laughs> Twinsies. I see you pulling out a green. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You caught me as I could say, I'm pulling out water elemental. So hey. again, it is water elemental to a metal medium. And I again, thin it out with a little bit of water once you get that mixed together. And we're going to be nodding to Evandra on this one. Um, the problem is the greens that we have selection from, a lot of them were too, too green. And hers is more of like a teal green mm. is the issue. So I'm going to see how this mix mixes. And if we want to darken this up slightly, um, we can always tap into uh, one of our greens from the classic combination that we had for the first round of paint sets. Yeah. But I want to see how this looks first. Mm. Yeah, this one held its color a little bit more because the lighter colors tend to hold their tone a little bit more closely. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so that is a little... It is slightly more pale than I want it to be. And I'm trying to pull up a a picture of a Vondra real quick. Here. I can do it oh, right now. Oh, you've got? Oh, cool. Bling! So see how it's got that more of that teal bluish happening? Yeah. It is It is a much darker than what yeah. we got. So I'm going to jump into... Oh, I bet you. Maybe? Bubble? Bubble! I love All listening right. to you think out loud. Sick green. Sick green from the um, prismatics. Okay. Let me just see. 
No, take it back. Take it back. Take oh, it back. The outside okay. looks like the right color, but the actual color is not the right color. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, that might be something. Oh. Yes. Okay, so put a dot of the, the Jubilex wash into this. Oh, okay. That might be our little trick here. Uh, okay. Hey, now it's a party. Oh, it's gonna be the other one. There. I'm gonna put in two drops of that. Jubilex slime wash. There yep. You are. Just a drop, you said? Two drops. Okay. That gets us closer to Evander Tones. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Right away. I might even do one more. But I'm liking how that's looking a lot better now. doop doo There we go. Yeah, I might even do one more as well. Because I wanted to read a little bit more green than what we have for Antrius. There we go. I'm happy with three three drops. Let me pull Avandra off. And thank you, Avandra. Exactly. And again, I'm gonna thin that out a little bit. Yeah, I just put water in it, but now that we've added a bunch more, even with it being a wash, I feel like it's already gotten it's still a, a little thicker thick. again. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm happier with that color blend as opposed to just the straight water elemental. Um, and again, the majority of the time I have the notes fleshed out as much as possible, but sometimes you just get into painting and you realize that's not quite as I had hoped. Yeah. So you just kind of go back and clip yourself to your paint case. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's, Whoops. let's, let's try this again. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going to take a moment before I even start. I want to see what, what yours ended up with, because I feel like. Oh, okay. I'm still, yeah. I'm still in the same ballpark. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and Lurking Rider was asking, I recall Oops All Cleric one shot that Lauren played Orkira in once. It was fantastic. I d so there's been two that I've been involved in, both that I've actually ran. Um, there was an Oops All Cleric one shot that I ran for a charity game. Mm -hmm. Uh a, a year and a half ago three, well oh, wow. like more than that many several years ago actually many moons ago <laughs> yeah and so everyone was a cleric um uh -huh. and so th they worked to pick different subclasses and all be from uh different gods or different pantheons or whatever mm -hmm. um and that one that was just ridiculous fun and then i ran and this was about a year and a half ago i ran an all phoenix cleric game where oh, not only right. was everybody yeah. a cleric, they were the same subclass. Um, and that was a much more, it was the first time I've ever ran a one shot that was a serious one shot. It wasn't Ooh. a silly. Uh -huh. um, and that was at the player's request uh, mm -hmm. because I asked. And because of the power set that the Phoenix cleric comes with, one of the big draws is like, hey, I can I can resurrect people super easily or you know it's got these these cool mechanics to it and that's why i ask because i'm like you know if we want to if i want y'all to be able to show off your your powers here that does involve you know bringing people back from the dead so mm -hmm. they they asked for a serious game and that was a lot of fun and that is neat and a couple of them multi-classed um because uh -huh. i think I think they were like 9, 10, 11, somewhere around there. So they were high enough level that they could multi-class. But mm -hmm. once again, even with them being all the same class and subclass and all praying to the same deity because of the subclass, right. there was still a huge variety of of characters. And um, basically, it was it was super cool it was cool how That's everybody neat. came together it was just like all right here's here's all the differences the different ways we're going to do this and they flavored things in ways i had you know in a way this shouldn't surprise me because players will always always do this and flavor uh -huh. things in a way that surprises the dm but 
even with me having created that some class, there were things that they did that surprised the heck out of me that I loved. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's really cool when that happens. I'm here for it. Yeah. Absolutely here for it. Yeah, there's there's been quite a few games that I've either ran or played in that it's the oops all. And I know I'm not the only one. I, I know there's been quite a few well, of those. Robo Goblin is a lot of oops all fun yeah. ones. It's actually been a little while since we've had an oops yeah. all game. We should we should look into that again. See look at what has happened and see if we can find a, a different oops all that we haven't done yet. There you go. Because I know I know Todd ran a, an Oops All Warlocks. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I'm trying to... Th I know there's the Oops All Druids. Obviously, Oops mm. All Clerics. There's been Oops yeah. All Bards. Oh, yes, yes. There's been, definitely been Oops All bar Birds. Mm -hmm. Birds. Birds. <laughs> Birdy birds. I, I have ran Oops All Tabaxi and Oops All Aarakocra. Oh, that's fun. I've ran both oops of those. Oops, all zombies? No. <laughs> Ruff, I just said, oops, all zombies? No. No. Not for um, me. Not for me. Bye. Checking out. See you later. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now the question is, is do we want to kind of nod to um, BBEG? Because we do have this fourth panel at ooh. the very tip of the pedal. And since BBEG is now announced. Yeah. Um, let's we do could it. go in and do that. Okay. So then you're going to want to grab... The gunmetal. Did we not grab gunmetal out of there? Um, I, I thought I said to grab so, but you know metal. what? Oh, yeah, we're going to want gunmetal. Okay. That's also from the prismatics. Come here. There you are. Yeah, it's going to be in this one. So, if we take a look at Bibi the good. Uh, uh, you can there. see he's got like that gun metal -y. So perfect, perfect, yeah. perfect. <coughs> we'll get the g in there. Or the beg. Oh, yeah. Uh mm -hmm. Lurking Rider. Dragons for dinner was oops all dragon. Oh, yep, it was. That was. Yep. Oh God. That's what? right, my little old lady. <laughs> mm -hmm. Marrow. Marrow, honey. You're looking game. a little hungry. Yep, and then and then that inspired uh, Trevor to run Oops All Kobolds. Yep. God, that was fun. They both yeah. were fun. See now, now all I can think about is like, oh, what will we, what will we do this year for extra what Oops All? What are Oops All? Gonna have to start chatting with everybody and be like, so oh. any any ideas for your Oops All? I think I might have to take a bow out of that one because i remember when extra life's happening this year and i may have a conflict oh yeah shoot oh well Aww. well maybe we can pre-record and then all all of us who oh are around there's an idea there's a fun idea yeah do different types of uh incentives yeah. for extra life but we got time we got time to figure that out um Yeah, and lurking writer, you're right. Every uh, when I did the Oops All Phoenix clerics, they all came from a a different universe because the lore of a uh, phoenix is that there is only one. So, right. and then the oh, lore so like of a... yeah, yeah, and the lore of phoenix clerics is there is only one. So, which I know it's sounds very universe. Sith. <laughs> no, I was thinking more like Spider Man. Yeah, I think Spider Man is more apt. I I was not upset. At the, um, I think it was actually B. Dave who was just like, "So wait, you're, you're telling me uh, Phoenix clerics are Sith?" I'm like, "Well, no, but not of course all he of them. would be the one to yes, you know what? But he he's not wrong, back. right? Like, right. That is that is not a an un that is that is an apt description when you're talking about right. You know, uh, a person in charge and a a apprentice, as it will." And yeah. you know what? Uh, the Phoenix is a neutral entity, so it is completely up to who okay. the cleric is to... There there can be evil and clerics out there, depending on the, <laughs> the universe, so... Yep. Oh. 
Rough okay. Rider. No. <laughs> I read what? Rough Rider's comment. Oops, all ghosted. No players show up. <laughs> no, you know who will show up? Will be oh. Robo Goblin because, mm. mm-hmm. because they are mm-hmm. a huge fan of being a ghost. And so yeah. Oops, all ghosts will just be the best game for, for Robo. <laughs> oops, you know... It's it's oops all owl bear ghosts. I mean, yes. And just run a game Robo? for Robo yes. on their birthday. Oops all all. Oh, I love that even more. Ah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to talk to Jorge now and be like, hey, <laughs> I had this ridiculous we idea on chatting. stream. Mm-hmm. We How do you feel about? Uh huh. I'm gonna get halfway through the statement and they're gonna be like, yes. So yes. here's our here's our fun little nod to the awful ones and BPEG. You can see these uh, plates all just have a little color shift and happen in here. Yeah. Not fun. I'm still catching up. It was too perfect with Avandra coming out during the Modron March and everything like that. Like, let's let's do this. This is good. I'm happy with this. Yeah. Um, so once you're set and ready to go, you're going to want to grab your glorious gold because that'll be the next thing we're going to do. But I'll wait until you okay. finish so I don't get too far ahead. Yeah, I've still got two cool. more petals to go so i'll be there in a second that's totally okay and i'm going to i'm dealing with um let me guess my cats little ones. no no uh my other things that i like to take care of my children <laughs> 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 okay so the, the furball I mean, mom i'm the human mom i mean that's fair <laughs> You are you are just the mom, mm. but the the mom to everybody. I mean, that seems like a fair. <laughs> Who are you? I'm mom. I'm just I'm, mom. I'm mom. I mean, it is a very valuable skill set in a bunch of different places and ways. Yeah, it does help. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay, let me just take one last. Totally fine. Look, see, because the looky loo. I love how the metal medium turns everything metallic, and I love how it looks, but it does make it slightly harder to see, see whether. Yeah. yeah. Hey, did I miss that spot, or is this just shiny? Okay, I'm good. Shiny. Good. I'm good. You I'm good? good. You said okay. glorious gold. Glorious gold, which is basically like you know, purely a gold color metal, and we're going to apply this to around the edges of the petals now, where basically all this brown is living. Ah. We're going to pl- apply it to there. And this doesn't need any metal medium. It's already no. there. And mine also does not need any thinning. <laughs> well, let's see about mine. Well, yeah, Some metallics you do good. have to thin. Others, you're just like, no, no, you're, no. you're good as is. We can work with you. Definitely a detail brush will be your friend for these because they're a little bit more narrow. Yeah. However, they're more friendly when you don't have a cat hair sticking out of the tip of the brush. I mean, or the cat hair just becomes the tip of the brush. Sometimes, I mean. yes. Sometimes, yes. It will become the brush. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, and now's the lovely point in where I get to uh, fix a couple of mistakes on the way down. She's like, oh, that was a little too much blue right there. Gold. Do, 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 do. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing the um, face of the plate, and then I'll do the side of the plate. Or the petal, I should say. Hmm. It's just sort of easier to edge out the top portion and then turn it on its side and get the size of it. So it's almost like going around and doing two passes on the pedals, but one pass you're focusing on one side and the second pass you're focusing on the edge side. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, Lurking Writer wants to know, how's Helen doing these days? Helen is fine. She is out of reach. Um, I actually had to move her to a safer spot because Rory was starting to pick her up and run around with her. Oh, no. Um, so I've kind of put Helen tucked over yonder. Um, 
Yeah, Helen just deserves to, to have have a space in where she's not going to have to worry about kitties. That's just it. I was like, what do you, one night she's like running around. This is Rory, not Helen. Mind <laughs> I have to say that. Um, <laughs> Rory was running around making all these wild cat sounds. I'm like, what are you doing? And it was like 11 o'clock at night. I don't have that many lights on at 11 o'clock at night because I'm trying to wind my brain down. Yeah. <laughs> and so she comes into the room. And remember, Helen is a um, a roper. So there's all these tentacle things. So Rory has it by a tentacle, but then you see like just this dark object with things sticking out all over the place. Oh, jeez. In her mouth, I was like, what do you have? What is this? Oh, God. I had like my heart in my throat for a good <laughs> five minutes while I was trying to figure out what was, what was in Rory's mouth. And I just turned out Rory, to be Rory, you've Helen. caught Cthulhu. What's going on? <laughs> Well, my brain's going like, what type of mutated Jersey cockroach did you find? Oh, yeah. Oof. You know? I, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I'm near the woods. So, like, there are some interesting critters that can find their way into my home just because, you know, the woods are good for that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was just like, okay, Helen is not living here anymore. She's going where you can't reach her. <laughs> Knowing Helen, Helen, she probably had fun. Right. Helen's wild <laughs> Here it's I go. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since we've talked to Helen, so it has been good to see her. Again. I, I'll, I'll remember to snag her for the next. Uh, I was gonna say scene for the next episode, <laughs> and see. I also appreciate how that mini is so perfect to hold a D twenty. Mm hmm. And brushes and other things. It's yeah. just a fun mini. It just fits so well. Yeah. It's a good interactive mini in its own sculpt, which is nice. I'm really happy with how this is looking. That is so much fun. Yeah. Do, do, do. Uh. And if this is something where you wanted to not do the uh, awful ones colors, all you would have to do on these petals is alternate how we did the beehive underneath. So that was polish gold and glorious gold and just go polish glorious, polish glorious, and then you paint around with the glorious gold. Hmm. Okay. If you just wanted to keep it a little bit more standard. And then you Basically would have to alternate the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Such a shiny mini. Oh, very, very shiny. Gilmore would be happy. Shiny. Also, I was laughing at a uh, rough rider who said uh she learned that helen makes noises when you pick helen up well, yeah. <laughs> it's just true yep hi oh my goodness oh god and Sorry, rory does this thing and you can you can ask goblin about this rory does this thing when she has something she knows she shouldn't yeah. she like stops and stands like a bulldog and stares right the heck at you like, mm -hmm. I dare ya. I yep. dare ya to catch me. Yep. Because that's the game. Mm -hmm. look, look what I've done. Look what I can do. Uh-huh. Little stinker. It's a good thing she's cute. <laughs> I, don't get me wrong. I love her. I really do. She's got such a wild personality. It just... You can see the wheels turning sometimes. You're like, don't do it. Don't do it. And she goes, I'm doing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You said no. And thus, I must uh -huh. say yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, you said don't? I thought you said do it. I didn't hear the don't part. Mm-hmm. Actually, knowing cats, it's probably, I completely heard the don't part. And because you said don't, I'm going to mm -hmm. do it. She's great uh, for that. kitties. Ah, oh, the kitty cat. We love them. That should be one of our next emotes for Twitch oh, chat. That would be fun. One of your cats. Or all three of your cats. <laughs> all the cats are like their paws up over their heads. <laughs> Yay! Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, 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 there we go. Okay, you know, that's interesting. I didn't even try to do that, but Rough Rider just pointed out a rainbow Modron, and we've kind of done a slightly rainbow Modron. Yeah. At the start of Pride. I'll take it. That's a happy coincidence. 
Yeah. I'll take it. I don't think this is a specific flag. No, but... no, it isn't. But it's just but seeing I... the multicolors on it. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I have done beholders for Pride. And those, those were so much fun to do. Like like um, every eye stock a different color or something? No, I did a graduated fade. Um, oh. So I did an ace one for Tall Squall. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I started off, I th- I'm trying to remember the order that I did, but I started off, I think it was like with the dark purple fading into, was it the gray into the white into the black? I'm trying to remember how it goes for the ace flag. Um, and then for someone else, I did um, a bisexual one. So it was, again, the colors stacked as they are on the flag, but fading from the top down to the bottom of the beholder. And then oh, having fun, so like cool. making the eyes the different colors of the flag stripes. And then I did a um, gay pride flag where it was basically like rainbow beholder again, fade through. That was a lot of fun. Oh, that's Rory. so cool. We were just talking about you. Hey, we were just talking about you, Miss Thing. No stealing a mini while you're here. Oh, no, she's eyeing this one. What do you think? No. Look at she's literally like, what this? <laughs> Ooh, well. new toy. Uh huh. You're talking about running around with minis. Can I has? Oh, do the pride. I- well, that's just it. The behold of that it looked like the pride iris rough rider. Um, except it was more ombre of a fade down than what we have on our logo right now. It was fun. That was. I love what Maddie one. did did with these shirts. Maddie though. does a oh, Maddie like knocks it out of the park every single time. They have a really. And, and for those who don't there. know, Maddie is our graphic designer here yeah. at Codename. They are and uh, I mean, not only are they just an incredible person and also uh, super amazing, but they are incredibly fast. And I uh-huh. say that. Because oh, every single week, really? someone someone's like, Maddie, I'm so sorry, but I have this like urgent request for you to get this and done. An hour later, it comes and you're like, or less. Right? Or less. <laughs> like, how all, all right, I know you've got like a, a mound of stuff on your plate. How mm-hmm. did you do this so fast? And they also do their <laughs> own art. Like they have mm-hmm. a really cool account to follow on Twitter, which I'm blanking on what the name of this account is, the handle. Um, oh. But I enjoy following them on Twitter because, like, they'll just put up some of their art. That I'm just doing this sketch. I'm like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's amazing. But I love the the way they did the because they did all one, two, was it three shirts? It was the CNE shirt, the Idol Champion the shirt, and code the code name, and the Idol Champions and Bushwhacker, right? Bushwhacker. Yeah, yeah. I think it was all three of those. Yeah. So they were awesome. That's right. I gotta find that shirt. Come to think about it, I'm missing my Bushwhacker one. shirt. I might not have been sent to Bushwhacker, but I have both this one and the C and E one. There the Codename go. Entertainment, I should say. Yeah. So, do, do, do. yeah, this is the finicky takes a little bit longer part, just because you're kind of edging around. Yeah, and I gotta do a a a quick fix on Ooh. some place that I got a little more than I wanted to. So That's just, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I did notice that it's almost one o'clock. Ooh. Ooh. So, yeah. Let me do this quick so, fix. And, yeah. And let then, me get this other side of the pedal and then I can stop to show some fun things. Yeah. And then go back to the edge side of the pedals. That'll be a good little break point for my hands. Yeah, remember everybody how we said, uh, you know, we might have more announcements coming up soon? Uh, we've reached soon. Yeah, when will that be now? Well, now. Uh, there we go. Pre, okay, let me put that down. Now. Hold on. Yep, hold pretty, on. What's, what's, how's the hold space on. ball thing go? Uh, when when will then when will be, then be now? now? Soon. <laughs> exactly. So we are about to get into our soon. Soon. Oh. When will then be now? Well, now will be now. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to start off with the DLC first? Oh yeah, because that's that's the marquee. That's the marquee thing. So the reason we wanted to wait a little bit to talk about this is because um, the two lovely people behind Virgil and Kent, aka Brian Gray and Eugenio Vargas, uh, announced at noon that our next charity event. It's not going to be a familiar this time. They're pride skins. Mm-hmm. So we worked with the two of them to create. Well, they created. Let's just they, face it. Yes. Oh my skin. gosh, this yeah. design call. I 
It's not that I play favorites, but this is probably one of my favorite design calls ever because of how into the concept they go. Because they both come and they're like, oh, we don't really know what we're doing yet. And then by the time we're done, I was like, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the two of them just play off each other beautifully. Wonderful. and Absolutely the, wonderful. I know it's probably the most, I don't want to say simple, but like the most obvious part is the fan in the rainbow colors. But, but I want so that Brian. fan. It's I so, want, Brian has it's, it. I know. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> and it's it's just perfect. So anyway, these are going to be available starting on the 5th. Yeah. Yes. Monday at noon, you can purchase them and just like all of our other charity events, if uh you purchase it within the first week that they are out, all net proceeds will go to the Lambert House, which is yep. a fantastic charity organization that uh we we love uh supporting as much as we exactly. can. Um they're going to be so, available. You can get the uh, Virgil's alone, Kent's alone, or you can get them both together as a little package. And I, I mean, obviously you should get the package because how can you have Kent I and mean, not Virgil? Seriously. Right? Right? Yes. But so that They're just amazing. got announced. And then to celebrate, we're going to play a little D&D &D game. And so a couple of other friends are joining in. Um, hey, hey, V is going to be you in this me? one. And the amazing Gabe Hicks, who it's been a little while since we've seen. Mm -hmm. Last time we saw them was in... Um, the uh, Quest. That's true. They did appear yep. on Familiar the Quest. Marvel. Yeah. Uh, well, so the reason I was thinking of Idol Champions well, Presents yeah. is because um, Gabe is going to be playing Solok and V is going to be playing Voronika and uh, Eugenio is going to be playing Kent and Brian is going to be playing Virgil. And and I have the pleasure to DM them in a, a little one shot gonna that we're going to so be running fun. Monday evening, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, two hour game. Nice, fun little one shot that... Uh, it is literally just to celebrate the release of the Pride Skins, and uh, I hope you come and enjoy. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about it. I am excited. I'm excited. I'm, excited. Party. I'm I nervous, really... but I'm excited. Oh so. no, no, we're all we're all getting geared up. Quite frankly, I am very curious to see how Voronika gets along with the others. I just think in work. general, I think I think it's going to work. I'm just ex I'm excited to see the interactions. Just having seen them all play their characters in various ICPs, I'm like, and here's Nika. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will say we had that same question before the Vecna one shot was like, I, right? You know, it's going to be interesting to see how these characters get along. And then it was super. Oh, easy. It worked out so well, yeah. Especially for a one shot in where everybody's yeah. kind of on the same page. So. I'm I'm pretty positive that the little adventure y'all are going to go on, everybody will be on the same page. There you go. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's also a two-hour one-shot, and I'm fully ready for there to be chaos. Um, I was talking to Eugenio about this. Gabe is amazing, and I've had the the immense pleasure of DMing for them before, and so I'm very well aware that they are uh, an absolute chaos player and will mm -hmm. do the thing. Like the last time I DM'd for them, they intentionally tried to get eaten by the Tarrasque, which was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be interesting to see Gabe playing Solok, who, who is, is very yeah a little more reserved. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I I think I I'm pretty positive y'all are going to gel well. I know oh, yeah. at least the four of you as players love hanging well, out with just each other. It, yeah. And that's that's really all that matters to me. And then and then we'll be celebrating awesome skins coming out for a great charity. Done there for a great cause. So Locke, I assume, yeah. is going to be so confused as the lurking writer. Um, I think there'll probably be a little bit of that initial confusion, but like I said, without spoiling anything, I think I've come up with a way for them to all be on the same page pretty quickly. But we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Sight. Maybe within the first five minutes, it'll be a completely different adventure, and I'll be writing things on the fly. And I mean. That's yeah, that definitely is a DM thing. <laughs> yeah, that is that. But you know what? That's that's one of the other joys of it being a two hour one shot is like, mm -hmm. yes, I've got an adventure. But if y'all don't do the adventure, but you still have fun and we just go off into wild space, oh, yeah. I'm OK with that, too. I will I will go wherever y'all want to go. Yeah. <laughs> Lurking writer Kent and Virgil get to meet Solok and Voronika. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I'm just oh, looking back at everybody talking about how how much they like the pride skins. Yeah, this it's oh, I'm so thrilled with how they came out. Yeah. 
Cat did, um, Cat and Adam, they worked on the skins. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I'm very quickly looking through, uh, yeah, exactly, Evil and Berserk. If you play and have fun, you did it right. Exactly. And Mm -hmm. I think the only difference between a streamed game and any other game is, uh, I would say, if you play and you have fun and the audience has fun, then you did it right. So that's really the only major difference, in my opinion. And, and yeah, I think... I'm 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 at the point where I'm just doing the turnaround trying to yeah, find places that I side. missed, which I'm sure I did. I'm going around now and I'm just doing the edge side of the pedals to mm-hmm. get that going. I also made the yeah. huge mistake of looking into my spotlight and now I have like you know how like when someone takes a picture of you and you get the flash in your eye? Yeah. Whoopsie. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Moobot yeah. had a moment when, and was very Uh-oh. upset at all the caps. However, I totally Uh-oh. understand. Caleb Marin, happy birthday. Welcome. Happy birthday. Happy Friday on oh, your happy birthday. birthday. Happy Peyton Slay on your birthday. Uh, hope you have a lovely birthday weekend. Sorry, Moobot was just like, you cannot be that excited. You are not allowed to be No that birthday excited joy for you. <laughs> you. Your birthday joy must be a little bit less. How about you like rein in the joy? Says Mubot. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mubot. Why don't oh, you be Mubot. happy and not joyous? <laughs> like, oh, be happy, but not that happy. <laughs> oh, Mubot, we love you. Right? Even even when you're you're doing things like that. Ah, uh, well. Mubot reminds also, me of that aunt or uncle who's like, did you really want to do that? I don't think you meant to do that. Let's just kind of fix this for you. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you really think that mm-hmm. is one of my few complaints about Moobot? Because th- listen, uh, a lot of the Twitch bots are super helpful. Oh, so handy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Super, super helpful, uh, especially for like just helping moderators just have a baseline of, of security and comfort. Um, yeah. And so the few times that it it gets a little overzealous i try to i try to not be upset about it my only right. complaint about moobot is when it does that there's when it deletes a message because it goes there's too many caps there's no way to undelete you it. can't undo it yeah you can't you can't tell moobot hey this is okay let me let me just let this through so right that's so true yeah i wish i had that button to be like moobot it's fine it's fine. Chill. They're good. They're good. They're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All's good in the world. Just, you know. <laughs> it's a Friday. I like how Moobot now has a personality. Listen, I've been uh, in chat or on streams in where just because of the nature of the stream, nothing bad, nothing, uh-huh. the chats being nothing but wonderful, but just oh, because right. of what's going on, right. Moobot is having a field day. Yeah, and all of us are like, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> this is how it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Chat becomes oops all mubot. <laughs> Which is like oop all ghosting and where nothing happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got oh. brown. How did I get? Oh, I just realized oh? I got bronze all over me. Doing your Statue of Liberty impression. I guess, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's copper. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so it's... I'm thinking. Wow, I've had it for a while too. It is super dry. Hmm. I didn't get on my shirt, did I? No, I'm okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, you're thinking. So, you were thinking, I'm and I was panicking. Thinking. <laughs> you okay? So I'm thinking at this point we want to do the wash because we're running into the same thing. I want to get these eyes and the lips done, but mm-hmm. I don't want the washes to mute them a bunch. Um, so I think if we go back to our umber wash, okay. we do the wash on the mini and let it dry. And then we can go back to our quadrant. What quadrant? The quadrant. The quadrant. Quadrone. The quiddy. No, that's someone else entirely. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll go to the umber and All apply right. that. And this is, uh, once again, an application all over. Full application, you don't have to worry about the base, though. We are not all about the base at this point. Okay. 
Let's see. Maybe I will start with the inside since that's the... Yeah, that's a persnickety zone. Well, and, and not just that, but I always like to... Where is the thing I know is dry for sure? And the inside right. of this is going to be super... Yeah. Luckily, metallics tend to dry pretty darn quickly. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nine Nebel says, uh, by the by, I'm not much of an advertisement clothing person, but I wear the hell out of the Pride Irish shirt if it was someone, it somehow was a prize of a contest or drawing, just saying. That's actually a, a decent idea that I can flip by people because mm -hmm. as 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 I'm guessing you understand from the way that you've asked that that suggestion, yeah. um, merchandise is hard. Merchandising, merchand for yeah. at least for a for anyone, but especially for a company that specializes in digital goods. So, but I can I can pass that along. We have done shirt giveaways before. It's been a hot minute. Um, we did that with um, Bardic Inspiration. We mm -hmm. we had some shirts that we gave away. Uh, yeah. I can't promise anything, and it's definitely too late now um, because you 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 have to start planning you know pride like specifically months, but yeah. yeah any any um any fundraiser type of thing you have to give it at least a good month or two in advance or else you're just scrambling yeah. uh, but i will definitely pass that suggestion around for uh well i mean i'm future. just i'll make note of it <laughs> charities are v? literally my purview <laughs> i was about to say v make a note I'll just i'll make a note i'll make a note for next year thank you i don't want to I didn't want to call you out. I didn't no, want people to no, be No, no, I don't like... mind people knowing. I, yeah, I, I basically help sort of spearhead the charity efforts that we do in terms of um, getting and our And by basically, and... she is the main person who helps spearhead the charity efforts. Like, she's... Remember how before we were talking about how her mom skills are invaluable? This is one of the reasons, is organizations. <laughs> organization. Organization with the organizations. Oh, yes. Organizing the organizations. Yes. Oh Let's man, this see. Umber watch wants to bubble on top of everything. Yeah, I'm why? noticing that too. Why, why, why? Tell me why. I have to spend bubbles. a whole pass just like blotting out bubbles. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to figure out the best way to approach the petals too. This is. Yeah, definitely. I would recommend doing the undercarriage first because it's a little bit more finicky with angles and approach. Yeah. For sure. Oh and yes, goodness. I do. I do also agree that outside of Pride, people will be happy to have this shirt because yeah, I wear this shirt oh, all yeah. the time. Yeah. I have this shirt. I I got a bunch of of. Uh, Pride shirts in a variety of stuff and uh, a couple. I don't tend to wear them on this show, but I wear them fairly often. I've got a couple of D4 shirts that mm -hmm. are in. Oh, uh, I've got one that's nice. the Pride yeah. colors and I've got one that's the trans flag. And not only are they just pretty shirts, but also they are. I I don't know oh, how. This. Yeah, we. I was talking about this in a meeting. They are the softest shirts I've ever owned in my life. They are just soft and comfy and so nice and so i just wear them on a regular basis not just because they're they're beautiful but because they're so comfy they're so good i went secondhand shopping to get some stuff for the castle um because you know the dms they dress up they do they do their thing so i was looking for some um elements for cosplay purposes and what have you yeah and there were these two t-shirts and i like i'm going through the racks and i'm like just swiping through swiping through and my fingers touched this one shirt and it went like, like butter. And I stopped <laughs> and I pulled the shirt back and I touched, I'm like, oh, I am petting the shirt. The shirt is $2. The shirt is now mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happened twice. One was a beautiful mustard yellow and the other one was this gorgeous, um, just gray shirt. And they're both very lightweight. So they can be perfect for like summertime weather stuff. Yeah. But I was like, okay, not what I came here for, but you're coming home with me. For two dollars, comfy, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So basically, like, I get what you mean. Like, when you find those shirts, mm -hmm. so, like, mm -hmm, mine, mine now, I keep you. And wherever D four gets their merchandise from, for the, their merch moms, uh, yeah. consistently, it's like, oh, these are just the softest shirts. Yeah, amazingly soft shirts. 
Uh, <laughs> Lurking Rider's like, if you ever give away more Bardic Inspiration certs, I would like to be considered. Oh. I will keep that in mind. Like I said, we it's been a while since we've done it's been a while right. since we've done uh oh, wow. physical giveaways outside of some of the fun uh WizKids stuff that we did during right. uh, Idol Champions Presents. Yeah, WizKids and Beetle and Grimm, both of them were very generous and helpful with our giveaway efforts lately. So absolutely. And while we love doing those kind of giveaways and they're super yeah. fun, uh we like to focus on the digital giveaways, partially because, you know. We're a digital company, but right. also then we don't have to do the whole uh, the Canada except for not Quebec <laughs> because Quebec knows what you did. So rather Quebec wants to know what you did mm -hmm. <laughs> is really, yeah. there's some interesting legalities where it's just, um, yeah, it's safer to stay away. I understand. Yeah. I understand why Quebec has those rules yeah and i know they are supposed to be protective of their people but unfortunately it doesn't work out that way so no. so yeah digital stuff and then everyone can enter yes everyone can enter and we're not having to point fingers saying you know what you did <laughs> <laughs> that didn't come out right <laughs> we're just so used to to using the b-dave line that's that's uh -huh. what it is uh -huh. my favorite part of the b-dave line is every once in a while that like the next Idol Champions presents one of the first episodes. Quebec, you know what you did. And then uh -huh. there'll be new people in chat who are like, what did Quebec do? What did Quebec what's do? What's going on? This? And then, wait, and then the mods and everybody has to explain, eh, no, it's legalities and money and it's actually, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, mm -hmm. but it's always funny, that first episode. It's just like, what did they do? <laughs> All right, I think wait. I've got... I think I've got... An occasional T-Rex coming rumble the stream. What? Hold on. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I was hoping someone in chat could help answer that because unfortunately I'm in a position in where looking up things on the internet could be difficult. It is a fun running joke. I, I mean, I yeah. feel bad for the people in Quebec, but it is a- I do too, but still. All right, I think I have, I have done the wash. Sweet. What's next? Okay, what's next? We're gonna switch over to the quadrant, okay. and we're first going to dry brush their little wings. Okay. Oh, it might be when I put my um paints down on the desk. Hold on, my mic be too, my mic might be too sensitive. That's probably what it is. Oh, okay. It's happened before in the past because every so often there are these things called updates. No. <laughs> and the updates like to do things to your settings mm -hmm. and some of the settings you don't realize have been tweaked until the time comes to actually be live. So I'm wondering if my mic has now been reset to be more sensitive again. Maybe. Here, we're we're going to experiment. I'm going to. You hearing it now? You hearing it now? A very, very faintly. Yeah. Very faintly. And it's yeah. mostly getting noise gated. So. Okay. All right. So we're going to go over to Elvic Flesh. Sure. Which is that very pale. We pull, is this one the Elvic? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So we're going to dry brush the wings with Elvic Flesh. All right. Yeah. Why do you have to have a cap on it? <sighs> So it doesn't dry out. <laughs> no, I, I'm. It had that one of those uh, dry plugs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're one of fun. those. It's just ew, ew, ew. One of those. Ew, ew, ew. It's one of those. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so I am going to start dry brushing again, focusing on just the wings and keeping it, no pun intended, feather light as I move across with the brush. Because I don't want to overpaint, I just want to highlight the details that pop out on these little babies. Yeah, especially after you were talking about how the wash wanted to settle into mm -hmm. the the edges of the wings, and yeah. now that the wash is dried, it's very clearly settled yeah. into the edge. So you can see the difference between where it was washed and where we just did the dry brush. Dry brush. Yeah, it's got not dry brushed. Yeah, it's got some of that brightness back. Yeah, elf flesh is a very pale tone. I mean, 
It's paler than I am. <laughs> uh, might be paler than me. Hmm. Wee. You may also oh, yeah. find it helps to dry brush this with a wing red sting against your palm. Because if you try and do this as it's free floating, it's going to shift a little bit on you. Ah. So just giving it a little support from the back will help it make it easier for you to dry brush that wing. Oh yeah, that does help a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, radar Rame. I mean, you can't always believe what chat GPT says. <laughs> Be be cautious of ChatGPT. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm catching up on on no, why everybody's totally. talking about Dinobots in chat. Which I mean, I'm here for Dinobots assemble. Uh, I just wasn't <laughs> expecting it. Yes. Hello, hello, you sting. You did this thing. She small. Yes, I'm speaking to Rory. Hey, I thought you were talking to the mini, and I was here for it. Mm. But it is a tiny mini. He's so small. Eat your little wing, and it goes flappity flappity. And now we're gonna go over to Dead White once you get those wings dribbished, mm -hmm. and we're gonna Almost paint done. the eyeballs. Right, Dead White. Yeah, Dead White, which is basically like almost a pure white. If you're looking for a generic color. And again, if you're new here, uh, the paints we are using are the WizKids D&D Prismatic Paint Sets. They come in beginner and intermediate. And they have fantastic names on some of these paints, like, you know, blood, not blood pudding, black pudding. <laughs> Although blood pudding would also be an interesting name. Blood pudding name. would be an interesting one. Um, illithid, illithid skin, elfic flesh, uh, displacer beast. We just had water elemental on this one. Elemental. Yeah. Elemental. So... Where are dead white? There we go. There you are. Okay, I'm gonna. The reason why I want to do the eyes first is because we can manipulate this a little bit okay. and lift that arm up and out of the way, just with a nudge. Oh, okay. Yeah. So nudge that up and out of the way, and then just go in with the dead white and paint each eyeball. And it has lidded eyes. So you see how there's like this half moon thing going on? Paint the lower half of the moon. I have, okay. Well, let me get it going for you. I've so just see. realized I've been seeing this wrong the whole time. Oh? And I thought that they were little slits. I thought that this was like, like when oh, you squint when right. you're pulling back the bow, I totally thought it was I just mean, a little tiny line. So You could if you wanted to. I, I'm actually happier with the with that version of it. I was very confused. I'm like, this is a weird, but no, I, I like this better. I, it's just, okay. it was one of those things where I was just seeing it wrong. So, right. Oh, and I did want to, uh, Rough Rider, Luke. Um, so for the sketching hour, we're focusing on other uh, c and &E artists for filling in the spot while Alexis is off on maternity leave. Um, so while I, will, I won't say no, you're probably going to see, you're definitely going to see C&E artists first. Um, and, and they are excited to get on the show. Yeah. We, they are all very, very excited. Basically, the only reason people have uh, said no so far is because of being too busy. But otherwise, yeah, yeah we're going to have exactly. a nice a nice variety of folks joining us on uh, the sketching hour. All right. All right. Give me a I second. need to mute myself really, really quick. Lauren, you'll yeah, still hear me shouting at my child, but one moment. <laughs> <laughs> I will still hear everything. Nuln oil, which captions could never get right. Yeah, nuln. Oh, it never nuln does. Nuln. Nuln is N U L N. Nuln is the Nuln. Off. Nuln. I'm just looking at captions while I'm like, Nuln. No. 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 
Known. I'm going to say it slowly. Mind it just goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Say for me. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like, yeah, I, guess, I was like, I'm not doing it. No. Now, <laughs> I was actually, I, we like to uh, make fun of the captions. Mm. I will say I was very impressed the other day at the captions because I I use the captions when I'm producing I'm not just to make sure that we have closed captions on right. but also it's a good way of being able to check hey is the audio coming through and is the stream going without actually having to turn on mm-hmm. the audio True. and uh, during Eugenio's interview yesterday it was not only I mean Eugenio is a professional performer mm-hmm. and so Obviously, uh, he was speaking with a lot of with very good diction. And so that helped as well. But it was catching words and phrases and even um, like D&D words and things and putting them in capital letters. So I don't know if there was an update or if we've been training it, but it was I mean, it was doing a really good job of of catching a lot of the nuance. Cool. And now I'm just going in with black on the tip of my brush and literally dotting my eyes. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. If you want to, if, if, I was going to say Q-tip. If you want to toothpick it, I wouldn't recommend I a Q-tip. Toothpick. You can absolutely toothpick, <laughs> toothpick it. Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna. But that just brings personality right into this creature. <laughs> I don't know why. It pleases me when the ones that have bigger eyes, you can like get a little bit more going with the pupils. Oh, yeah. This one's just tired of life. (laughs) I'm like, fine, I'll shoot it. (laughs) Mm. I heard what you said, and now I'm just going to shoot you. Okay, here we go. I have to. Fine. Smug Modron. Yes. I like it. All right, so that I'm going to leave to let the eyes dry. I'm I'm ridiculously proud of these mm-hmm. dots and the side Yay. eye that this Modron is now giving. Well, so I put them on a, a little bit on the side on the direction that they're shooting the arrow. Mm-hmm. And so now this Modron has just intense side eye and I'm here for it. I'm so happy. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. What are we what are we doing now? Um I was looking to see since we already have the dead white out, check and see if you could possibly do the eyes on your pentadrone or if it's still too wet we can wait mm. i'm not worried if we have to wait we wait a little bit longer oh. totally your call because we still have the bow and arrow on the quadrone to do i think they're dry enough do you want to wait you know what it can't it can't hurt to wait a little bit longer okay. and finish we the wait. bow and arrow we wait simple as yeah. that we will wait uh so now what we're gonna go for is back to I grab a black wash. It's back to a black wash. Okay. There it is. Oh my God, I thought I pulled that out. And we're actually going to put the black wash onto the bow into the arrow. Okay. So kind of adding the woody tones through washes as opposed to a straight up paint. Where is my wash brush? Where? There you are. So we already did the umber wash on it, which tinted a little bit more brown. And now this is going to help enhance things just a little bit more. And just on the bow and just on the arrow. And the shaft of the arrow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's all. And avoiding that arm. Yep. Just gives it a little bit more oomph this way. I know I can't show this off on camera because the camera will not pick it up, but I cannot wait to take I'm waiting for photos, yeah. Of this the side eye modron, I have I have never been so proud of my of eyes on any of my creatures, any of these minis that we've done until yeah. today. As proud, yeah. I should say, until today, and now I'm so happy. They're fun. I'm so I'm also going to put some of the black onto the feathering, just so that pops out a little bit more too. There we go. To doom and to doom. 
Uh, Lurky Rider wants to know, is the goal to get the Modrons finished this week or will there be mm -hmm. a part three? If no to part three, can you announce what the next mini will be? We will um, announce. Yeah, yeah, at the end. We have a fun one to show off. Uh, but yeah, we should be able to finish these up because we have about 20 minutes left and there's really just um, the eyes to go on these guys. And you saw how quickly we will do that. And then bases. And this one already is halfway done as it is. Mm. Um, so actually, it brings me to, while we wait for those eyes to dry a little bit longer, let's put Beastie Brown onto this one's base. Okay. Beastie, Beastie Brown. Bone. I don't have the Beastie Boys playing in my head. No, I do not. <sighs> Grass monkey. I was about to ask, which specific uh, <laughs> Beastie Boys do you got going on? <laughs> oh, I've got to water this down. Oh, jeez. That and sabotage. Oh. They kind of loop around each other. This yeah, is how two classics for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot how thick this was and how much more Thin water I needed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It absolutely needs to be thinned out, that beastie brown. But the whole reason for waiting on doing the base was because I knew we were going to do a lot of dry brushing near it. And I just wanted to be sure we didn't get too many metallics happening because it's a smaller base, so it's harder to manipulate the brush around it. The bigger base is a lot easier to kind of dance around. Yeah. Although I don't know about you, but this Modron is almost one of, both of their feet are like off of the Triangle. base. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's wide stances. Yeah. It's cool. I'm not upset at, at no. it. It's just different than a lot of the other minis and where... Yeah. If, if, especially since we just came from the mind flare where we placed things on the base. Um, True. And so yeah. it's like, okay, well, this is my fault. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's kind of an mean. interesting difference with this Mojon of like, it stances so wide that it's, it's just like, who needs <laughs> to stay on a base? Okay. And that takes care of the base here. So I'm going to leave the base to do its thing and dry. And I'm actually going to add some bone white to what I have of the beastie brown that's left and use that to dry brush the base of this mode, the pentadrome, I should say. Ah, excellent. Yes. Bone white, you said? Bone white. Dead white. Elfin flesh. Bone white. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to make this sort of like a cafe latte in tone. I will swatch it so you can see what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then just dry brush with that color. And um, once again, you need some water. And this is gonna start bringing out the stone-like details on these Modrons. So, all right. Uh, uh -oh. So, lurking writer says, "Is that a bit of self, quote, sabotage?" Uh -huh. um, uh, Rough Rider says, "You've got to fight for your right to paint and slay." And uh -huh. then, the lurking writer says, "No sleep till Modrons." <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and uh, Joranthanus comes in with a question for UV. Uh -huh. which I, I know the answer to, but a lot of people don't. Do you ever do custom minis? For example, do you get two mod Modrons, exacto knife some arms off a mini and crazy glue them to the other mini? Oh yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah, I kit bash, I custom paint. I um, dabbled in some sculpture, but I'm not like, not something I offer in terms of professional factor. But yeah, I, I, I have in the past uh, done custom orders for a lot of different people. And it's enjoyable and it's fun, uh, but it's also time consuming. And time and I have a very tenuous relationship. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you watch some of our older episodes, we've done a couple of kit bashes. Um, yeah. Not quite. It. I mean, the Orkira one, we didn't need to use the X-Acto knife, but I guess if the wings on the dragon that we pulled from... Right. Uh, was more difficult to disassemble. We would we have. could have, yeah. We could have used. Um, but like we did, we did the kit bash of Orkira. We did the Dahani one. How much kit bash? Dahani that? that was no, that was custom. That wasn't a kit bash. Um, we did kit bash the um Santa 
No, the clown. Sorry, the clown beholder. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did do that. It was the green stuff on that one. We also kit bash the beholder to look more like our iris as opposed yes. to the standard beholder. So we can kind of get the, the eye stalks going in the right direction, etc. for iris. Um, we've done some light kit bashing here and there for sure. Mm hmm. I think Orc here is the closest we've gotten to sort of like taking two and making something very new out of it because of pulling the wings off the wormling and then adding it to the dragonborn and that type of thing. Yeah, because the, the couple of beholders that we've done, it was either adjusting the actual beholder mini yeah. itself or using green stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so I think at this point, I'm, I'm done with the dry brushing and we're gonna let that dry and then we'll put a black wash over the base. Okay. That's the plan here. Um, so we can go back to now working on the eyes on the pentadrone. So again, that's just gonna be going to dead white. And these little orbs here, I know you were saying they look like noses to you, but these are actually their eyes. <laughs> so we're gonna go in and paint those, whoops, or not, we're gonna paint it white as opposed to black. Okay. There's my small one. I see a chubby orb. I want to paint the black, but I won't. Yeah, it's amazing how much of these specific... Maybe it's just Modrons in general that do it to me, because I'm usually better about pursing what I'm seeing, I guess. But in this case... I think a lot of it is because they're so selective in what humanoid features are included mm. um, because I do have the run. So it's like when you look at the monodrone, it's just eyeball and lips and even the lips mm. are kind of thin, but it's a big old eyeball. And then if you go to the duodrone, right? Yes. Um, it's eyeballs, lips and teeth, which, okay. Yeah. And then the tridone is a big old eye and big old lips. But that's it. Oh, and yeah. teeth on the one. And then this guy is eyes, kind of a nose, sort of. Like it's got, it doesn't have, it has the um, bridge of the nose, but that's it. It feeds right into lips. So it's like bridge of the nose into lips and you're missing the tip of the nose. Yeah. So it's it's kind of interesting. And then the pentadrone is just eyeballs and lips again. So yeah, it's it's kind of a lot of what kind of translates through. Yeah, I definitely feel like, you know how there are those pictures that you can look at that are, um, you can look at it one way and it's it's mm -hmm. two ladies talking to each other and you look at it the other right. way and it's a vase. And I, I do feel like for me, the these Modrons have definitely hit. I, I've now been looking at the two ladies, whereas I should be seeing a vase. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. But you know what? I'm just going to make those eyes too. Why not? Sort of an uncanny valley. And it's Maybe. Maybe. I've definitely misread mini stuff before, but mm -hmm. it's not to this extent. So I'm just, I'm kind of fascinated by my own brain's failure to see things right now. I don't think it's failure. I think it's just interpreting things in a different pattern. I will take that because that is kind. No, oh, it's true. <laughs> no, you're right. It is. And I think you're oh, right just... that it's just, it's because they're Modrons and very uncanny mm -hmm. valley right away. Yeah. Here's looking at you, kid. How many more of these left? Wow. So many eyes. This is the stream of many eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's this yep. Is the stream yep. of many eyes. You're thinking you're thinking of beholders, but really it's Modrons. It's the stream mm -hmm. of many Modrons. The Great Modron March is really where you get all the eyes. Getting quiet because I'm trying to be careful. Oh yeah, me too. Me too. Mr. Potato Modron. <laughs> I mean, kind of. That would be fun, mm. though. A Modron that switches out its faces stuff. Faces? Its face stuff. Its mm. 
I kind of picture that that's what Mechanus is like, right? Yeah, that makes sense. The, the Mechanus probably has all the all the parts that every other Modron has. Yeah. Yeah, one more, one more. Now I have the Addams I... Family theme song stuck in my head. They're creepy and they're kooky. Because it does apply to these guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, the more you think about the fact that these are mechanical creatures that also have um, fleshy bits, yep. the more they are just weird. But I love them. But I okay. love them. That's all five. Ah. <sighs> Number five is alive. Give that Speaking a of that being a callback. Right? So I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing and just put dots in for the pupils. Okay. But we got to let that dry. Yeah. Just for a quick beat. Or else we're going to, we're going to get. So I think while um, that dries, I think it's time to show off what we're going to do for the next week. Yeah. That be a That's a fun. great idea which oh there it is i moved it down a little i'm like where'd it go okay so we're we're doing this whole awful ones thing this week and we're actually going to keep going with the awful ones thing next week what we're going to do is take the frameworks fantastic white mini not the color but the creature the and white. we're going to a white we're going to take the white and we're going to paint it up to look like our dear bbeg because if you look here you can see there's a different head that isn't shown in the main showcase feature on the front there's a different head here that we're going to pop in and we're going to use that instead so it looks a little bit more like bbeg and kind of do a fun bbeg mini bbeg mini bbeg wow, <laughs> and do that <laughs> mini, mini, uh, mini. next week so we'll have some assembly and some priming and then some painting for this one it'll be a lot of fun again it's the whiz kids uh D D knows no whiz kids D D frameworks uh set it's the white and it is a sprue based mini. So that means when you get this, you wanna make sure you also have uh, an X-Acto knife, something to nip and cut, uh, an emery board for smoothing things out, as well as liquid super glue, okay? I prefer mm. Loctite, that is my brand of choice, but a liquid super glue, glue will do the trick. So that's gonna be next week. Also, I speak from experience when I say if you've got an, uh, a thing of super glue that you have been using but haven't used it in maybe a week test it yeah. before you go on stream yeah, to make sure that it thing. still works that is a thing i okay, learn so... from my mistakes now is this yeah that is actually <laughs> i was like i'm gonna use this wait no that is the black wash so i'm gonna go in with a little bit more black now okay and i'm going to dot eyes five All of right. them exact now are these too small to toothpick Oh, no. You could totally toothpick those if you want to. I, I've just really taken to this working real well for getting dots. I mean... So, But every once in a while, I look at a, a, an eye and I'm like, that's, that's real small. That's real super small. Nope. Okay, works here perfectly we go. fine if you want to do that. And I'm purposely going to go in and have some fun and kind of change where I'm putting the pupil. So like for the first one, I put it front and center. The next one, I kind of have it jotting off towards the side. More Modron side eye? Mm-hmm. Because why not? Yeah. And I'm going to put one sort of like looking down. Actually, this is kind of funny because it looks like it's down and it's like looking down at its mouth. I'm gonna try to get one looking up to see. Oh yeah. Can I can I make it look like it's rolling its eyes? Right. Basically, don't feel like you have to put them all in the same spot for each eye. You can play with it and have fun. Yeah, I mean, when you are a pentadrone and you can actually look in multiple directions at once. Why would you have all of your eyes looking in the same direction? Some exactly. ones over here would be looking that way. The ones over here yep. would be looking that way. You got it. All right. I don't know how well this is going to show off, but eh, eyes. 
The one with its mouth open definitely looks shocked. I went with an eyeball straight forward. It's just. Oh, funny. I'm doing one like dead center right now, too. And they're just kind of like. What do you mean? <laughs> mm hmm. I love it. It's fun to do. There we go. Okay. So that takes care of the eyeballs. Oh, wow. You went with much bigger. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just for fun. I mean, why not? Yeah. However you want to do it is really okay. So mm -hmm. those are all the eyes. And then what's interesting is I'm kind of looking at how these lips look after having put the wash on. I think I'm going to leave them as is. I'm not going to play around with putting any type of tone onto the lips. Because I think it's going to look too cartoonish. So I'm going to yeah. leave this without painting the lips. We're just going to leave that as is now, which means all we have left to do is to dry brush the base of this quadrum. And then our Modron should be done. Hey. <laughs> Nine Neville says, I love the down looking one. It looks so indignant. <laughs> Which mean, is, you know what? That's that's very apt for a Modron, to be honest. That's why it's fun to like do the eyes differently for each one. Mm-hmm. Gives each like, side a bit of a personality. <laughs> Come in every day, have this one yeah. sitting on your shelf, be like, how do I feel today? Turn exactly. So I'm gonna use that same paint as before. The one that we mixed up with the um, Beastie Brown and the Bone White. And just dry brush the base. Hmm. And then what we'll do once this has a chance to dry a little bit, because we won't be able to do it during our time, uh, we'll just take some black wash and put it onto the two bases once they've dried. And that will wrap up both of these Modrons. Excellent. Yes. And then at some point in the future, they will be uh, super glued to their bases. Or maybe yep. not. Sometimes I, I... Sometimes they can float on their own, yeah. Yeah, and even though this one's a little top-heavy, I, I think it might be able to. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But that brings it to the end of these Modron paints. Outside of the black wash. Yeah. But if we do that right now, it's just going to be a muddy mess. <laughs> we'll do that right now. The lurking writer wants to know, would it be wrong of one of the glue googly eyes to glue a googly eye into one for the pentadrone asking for me? I mean, for I a friend. I mean, if you can find a small one that fits, go for it. Why not? <sighs> yeah. I think that'll be a brilliant way to do it. So I here think that'd we go. be funny. Here we go. Yay. So, I'm, so I'm we still... have a lineup. We have a lineup. We have Penta. Here's Penta. Do, 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 do. Spin the pentadrone. Here's the quadrone. Ready to shove an arrow out into space. Yep. Or what have you. Shoot an arrow, not shove an arrow. Yeah. I mean. And we have the tridrone. 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 There. Um, this is one that I did with Tanya, so that was a fun one to do. Yeah. I got to catch up with that one because that's super cool. Yeah. And then we have the duodrone. And this was the one that was the non-metallic metallic that we did. So there was no metallic paints involved in this one, but it looks like it's metallic now. And then this one is just your standard metallic paints painted up. And this is the monodrome. So we have we have our, you know, our five. Yeah. yeah. Are there are because I know Modrons continue to go up the hierarchy, yeah, but I are there I need any to look more? And see. Yeah, I'm there are others. Now. I want to take take a look and see what others are floating around that we might be able to tap into because, quite frankly, it'd be fun to build our Modron army through painting, as well as on the game itself. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like we're we're right? making a Modron army right now. I, I feel like exactly. we've, already, we've at least got a squad, yeah. right? Yeah. So don't forget, we have happening this weekend. Make sure you get this before it comes to an end on Monday. Avandra in Yay! the uh, Great Modron March. So make sure you log in and get that taken care of this weekend. And then don't forget, coming on Wednesday, BBEG is going to be joining the game and working with the awful ones as well. Really very cool and lots of fun. Um, you also have a witch light skin for BBEG. And oh my God, there is a balloon that looks like a floating freaking beholder, which I love and is amazing. Honestly, it's like that's one of my little favorite little 
things they've added onto that. And then also happening on Monday, don't forget for Yay. our Lambert House, for our Pride Month, we've been working with Eugenia Vargas as well as Brian Gray. They have created these two fantastic skins for Kent and Virgil. You can get them individually if you so choose, or you can get them in this fantastic bundle as well. Those will be up and available in our shop at 12 p.m. on Monday. And the first week, those net proceeds will be donated to Lambert House. And to keep going with a celebration of this, uh, Lauren and I are going to be in a fantastic one shot. Lauren is going to be the DM. I'm going to be playing Voronika and we are being joined by Gabe, Eugenio and Brian playing Solok, Kent and Virgil. Um, this is going to be fun. So make sure you tune in on this Twitch channel at 4 p.m. on Monday for even more celebration and fun for those fantastic skins, which again, I'm going to show them one more time before we say goodbye, uh, for these fantastic Pride Marshall Krent and Virgil skins. So yes, that that's some really cool stuff we have coming around the bend. <laughs> exactly. God, I got to get that fan. Right? I want that fan. I say we get the fan. We're going to get we the fan. We all need to get the fan. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get the fan. So that's it for us in terms of what we're doing today. Thank you very much to Gabe, our fantastic moderator. As always, I know you're pulling stuff for us because we're focusing on painting and brushes and you're pulling questions from the chat and chat. Thank you for asking us questions and participating. Always great to interact with you. And then we will see you next, I was gonna say Tuesday. No, <laughs> we're gonna no, see you next We'll see you Monday, Friday. but then we'll see you Friday. <laughs> and we're gonna be painting up this framework white to look like BBEG. So that's everything. So I think we're gonna say, Goodbye. Yeah, stick around. We still got uh, one more show for today. So yes. enjoy, enjoy Sean and uh, a couple more awesome hours of Idol Champions. But other than that, have a good weekend. Bye, everyone.